you as a child might have tried several different roles before you found one that you liked, that suited you. And that became your style of relating. Now, what we, I want you to understand as far as where you're at today is that when you get into a relationship, you will gravitate towards a relationship where you can slide back into that role. Because you're comfortable with it, you know how to do it, but when you slide back into that role, that relationship won't be healthy. And so for you to grow, you need to understand your style, and then you need to understand how to change that style to a healthier style. Now let me say this. That role as a child seemed to be a good role. It seemed to work. And so that's why you kept doing it. And your brain in some place is thinking today it still might work today. But that role didn't work very well. And in an adult relationship, it will always create problems and result in an unhealthy relationship. So the first role is the hero, or some would refer to it as the perfect child or the angel. And so they are the child that is the super responsible child. They overachieve. They're usually perfectionists, people pleasers. They're very organized, so they're very good at their role of basically taking on lots of responsibilities within the family so that people don't get as mad as much as they would otherwise. And so they go into that and they do it and they stick with it because they have the skill set to be very organized and to do things very well. Now, Here's what their thinking is. If I am the perfect child, then I won't cause mom and dad problems. So they won't have more hassles to deal with because we got a lot of hassles in this family. And I will take the load off of them by doing extra responsibilities so that will enable them to cope better. That's what they're hoping. And... I will help them, and I will make this family better. And that is their hope. And they set about to be this perfect child. Now, what I want you to see as we go through these is why the parents like these roles. So why do they like the hero child? Because now they can go to all their friends, and they can say, hey, this child proves we're good parents. This child proves we're healthy. This child proves we have a great family. Because this child is our trophy. And we're going to show them off to everybody because it makes us look good. And that is why they love it. And the child loves it because now they're being validated they're being shown off, and they just soak it up. But problems happen when this child reaches adulthood. Here's what begins to happen. In that adult person, the hero child has all the results of complex trauma, which is shame. So deep down, they feel inadequate. Deep down, they don't feel they're good enough. But they never looked at it. They've never dealt with it. Because their priority has been performing perfection. And so now in adult life, they still don't look at it. But because they're very capable, they put all their energy into performance. To doing work. Signing up for the latest committee, etc. And all of that, they do stuff, they do stuff, 
and their focus becomes image. I can't fix my internal, is their thinking. I can't fix that shame. So let's build a perfect house of cards where I do everything perfectly on the outside. And so some go even beyond just performing lots of activity to having the perfect body, to having a house that's always neat, to having kids that are always dressed up and in sports and high achievers. Everything becomes about looking good. And as they do that, and most are able to do it for a while, people applaud them. People say, wow, I wish I could be like you. You have your act together, and it just feeds their shame. They think is a solution to it, and they feed off of it. And so in their own mind, they can lie to themselves, and they say, I must have my act together, because look how well I'm performing. But people then say, well, will you do this? You're so good, and they take on more stuff. Because they're afraid to say no. They're a people pleaser. And they take on more stuff. And they're this workaholic person. And as that has happened, they start to feel themselves burning out. Then they start to resent people who expect them to do so much. And they're getting angry on the inside and tired and burnt out and they feel themselves heading towards a collapse or a breakdown. And that's where many who are in recovery say, I need a relapse to have a holiday. The problem is, once they have their relapse holiday, they come back into recovery, and they're still afraid to look at themselves. And they say, okay, let's rev the motor back up again, And let's start going to all kinds of meetings and doing all kinds of service work and doing all of this stuff. And they rebuild their house of cards. Everybody loves them again. And everybody wants to be like them. But everybody asks them to do more and more. And they burn out again. And so they begin to have problems. And then in a relationship, their children are mad because they're never home. Their partner's mad because they're never home. And when they are home, they're exhausted. And everybody suffers in the family, but everybody outside the family gets the best them. And the kids and the partner now have resentments towards them. There's a lot of conflict and anger about their schedule, etc. And so what this person has to do to maintain this, which works against them, is they want a house of cards, they want people admiring them, but they don't want people to get to know them. Because then they'll see how screwed up they are. So they got to keep a lot of walls up and a lot of masks on so they don't have any satisfying relationships. Then they realize that if I feel emotions... Emotions mess up life. They complicate life. I can perform better when I shut emotions down. So they try to become a non-feeling, highly productive robot. And that is not good. Especially in recovery and wanting to get healthy. Then, because everything is tied up in what they do, They are hypersensitive to any criticism and they walk around in fear that somebody will see the cracks that are forming around this perfect world that they've created. So fear, hypersensitivity, increasing tiredness is all there. And then another problem they have is in order to be this perfect, person on the outside, they take on projects called needy people. And so they're picking up all these needy people 
And for a while it feeds their ego, but after a while it burns them out even worse. Now they come into recovery. Let's say they come to react or finding freedom. And I say, let's forget about doing. You got to look at your shame. They don't know what to do with that. And it gets them confused because their whole life has been about the outside, the externals. And they are the type of people that say, I don't need to look at that stuff. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And I'll say, I'll tell you what to do. Look at that stuff. And they don't want to go there because there's a huge fear that if they start looking at how broken they are, that they will just melt in a puddle of tears and depression and it'll be too much. And what I always say to them is this. It's going to hurt to go there, but we'll walk with you through it. And once you go through the beginning of it, you'll start to heal and grow and pretty soon you'll be happy you went there because you'll be getting healthy on the inside. But it is super, super scary. But I say to them, you can keep doing what you're doing, but you're going to be on a relapse cycle for the rest of your life. And you're never going to have a happy family. You're never going to have a healthy relationship. And you're always going to get more resentments and more anger and more burnt out. So it's your choice. You can keep doing what you're doing, but I think you can play that tape out to the end. Or you can take on your fear and risk starting to heal on the inside. So that's the hero. 